Hey, you clicked on my video. Appreciate it. Now be sure to like the video and subscribe to the page. Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Out of My League. I'm Nick Diaz. So when Brian Kelly first got to LSU, I remember his opening press conference. He was asked about his secret recipe to recruiting offensive linemen at Notre Dame. You know, wh- how did he go about developing them? Everyone always said that, you know, Notre Dame just does it differently in how they recruit and develop guys. It's just, it's a whole other level. And Brian Kelly, he didn't really want to give his secret away, but he did say that there is a profile that they look for, and they believe that a great offensive lineman doesn't have to come ready-made to college, like, say, a Will Campbell, that they can be developed. Now, we do have an idea of what that profile looks like because Brian Kelly has been doing it, you know, for over a decade at Notre Dame and now he's going to do it at LSU. And that profile looks a lot like LSU's new commit and first offensive line commit for the 2023 class, Paul Mabenga. So many people see the three-star offensive lineman from Georgia and they don't seem all that impressed. You have to look closer. So typically what schools like Notre Dame, Iowa, and Wisconsin have done over years and years, especially the last decade, in finding these future first-round offensive linemen just out of absolutely nowhere, they don't do what typical SEC teams usually do. They usually recruit 300 to 350-pound offensive linemen in high school, and they're going to say, well, we're going to get him into our program, get him in the gym, get rid of the bad body weight, and hopefully he's athletic enough Uh, to uh, be an SEC offensive lineman. That's what everyone else typically does. But what Brian Kelly, what guys like him have done, is find kids who are 6'4", 6'5", 6'6". They're about 260 pounds, 280 pounds. They look like a basketball player, more than, say, a football player. Some of them have even, even played basketball, which means that they have quick and athletic foot coordination. Maybe even they're new to the game of football. You'll also notice that they have a skinny but yet very wide frame, wide shoulders, long limbs, again, like a basketball player. And typically what they do with these prospects, once guys like Brian Kelly get them on campus, they say, all right, well, we know they're athletic and nimble. Uh, We know they aren't just relying on their size to mull over high school kids over because they're not that big. So we know their technique is good. Uh, We know they're coordinated in their footwork, which is very important to offensive line. And we know that they have a frame in their shoulders and in their joints that shows that their joints can handle more weight and more room for muscle growth. They haven't filled out their frame quite as yet. And that's how you get guys like, say, Ryan Ramchek, the starting right tackle for the Saints. Dude played junior college ball, then was recruited as a tight end to Wisconsin, and then they moved him to offensive line, and then two years later, he's a first-round pick, and he's now the highest-paid right tackle in NFL history. That's how that happens. That's how people at Iowa, Notre Dame, and Wisconsin have been doing it for years, finding these diamonds in the rough. Now, there's more to it than that. I'm oversimplifying it, of course, but that's just part of the general philosophy that guys like Brian Kelly have had to use to find these guys. And Paul Mabunga fits that profile perfectly. So Mabunga is... Six foot four, uh, six foot four and a half, six foot five, depending on what metric you look at. He's 280 pounds. He's originally from the Congo. He's played soccer his entire life. Kind of like basketball. You know they'll have quick, nimble, and good foot coordination. And here's the thing. He just started playing football two years ago. But that's not even the biggest uh, point I want to make. Mabunga, he's still 16 years old going to his senior season. And he won't turn 17 until this November. So he's still growing into his body and his frame, which he's got a big frame. And he's a baby. He's going to be 17 in November. And he was believed to be a silent commit to Michigan and to Texas A&M, was probably second on that list. Well, both of those programs, Michigan and Texas A&M, are known for producing a lot of great offensive linemen over the past several decades. But once again, Brian Kelly, he came in at the last second, He sold Mabunga on the importance of academics. His parents are highly educated people from the Congo. Uh, Reportedly, they work for Microsoft or something. And Brian Kelly staged a coup at the last second. 
So don't just look at the three-star ranking. Look at who wanted them and look at how they've developed offensive linemen. And if they knew that this guy was the real deal and they wanted him, that's how you know LSU might be getting a steal in Mbunga. Now, we've talked a lot about guys that Brian Kelly has gotten over the last several months. Several of them have been three stars. Whit Weeks, Jeremiah Hughes, who's the cornerback from Las Vegas, Tyler Parker, the wide receiver from Texas, who is my personal favorite up to this point. All of these guys are considered under-recruited three stars. And it's not by local recruiters and local people who have ties to LSU who are saying this. These are a lot of national recruiting experts who have said that those commits, Whit Weeks, Jeremiah Hughes, Ashton Stamps, Tyler Parker, now Mabunga, they've all said that, wow, those are some good gets, underrated gets, under-recruited because of personal biases, for whatever reason. Uh, they just started playing football. Uh, they changed uh, a different position a year ago, and so they're brand new to the position they just started playing. Uh, didn't go to a camp circuit somewhere. Uh, aren't playing at a big-time high school football program. All sorts of reasons why someone would be under-recruited. But what people need to realize, though, with Brian Kelly, is that Kelly has been forced to go after under-recruited three-star players his entire career. He's used to this. Because the majority of his career, he was at a Division II school, Grand Valley State, Central Michigan for three years, Cincinnati for three years. And even with Notre Dame with their high academic hurdles, he has to take a flyer on three-star guys who he thinks are good enough to play at Notre Dame. So Brian Kelly has spent his whole life evaluating three-star guys and saying, nope, they should be higher. He's made his career off of that. He's got an art and a science to it down packed. This isn't star chasing five-star guys just because recruiting sites have them as five-star guys like what Ed Ogeron would do mostly, and a little bit of less miles, but mostly Ed Ogeron where, you know, on signing day, they get left at the altar at the last second and their only fallback plan is, oh, uh, luck into Foster Morrow. Fall ass backwards into Lloyd Cushenberry, and they end up being NFL star players, all SEC guys. Or Ed Ogeron, you know, only offering two star Justin Jefferson because, well, he's a legacy and he showed up every year to camp. And so it was almost like, uh, yeah, we think he could be good enough kind of thing. Again, falling ass backwards. This is not that. This is pure and objective evaluation on Brian Kelly's part, something he's been forced to do his entire career. And why not still do it? And it's a big difference, a big difference that you're going to see in recruiting at LSU moving forward. And Paul Mabunga is just part of that profile that you're going to see with Brian Kelly. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Or follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok in the description link below.